We are here today with Kelly Sliger, the Grants Fiscal Officer in our Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. What Kelly does is so critical for our partners. Our Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program administers grants to states and tribes. There are 10 different kinds of grants, and Kelly and her team are managing roughly $298 million. Kelly works with states across a huge landscape, including Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Hawaii, and the Pacific Islands of American Samoa, Guam, and the Northern Mariana Islands. There are 46 tribes in the Pacific Northwest region, and 21 of those tribes are managing active grants. Kelly helps manage those grants from a financial standpoint, and she's our financial expert when it comes to providing technical assistance. It's a huge job, and Kelly is considered one of the Fish and Wildlife Service's best. Kelly, we know you're a fiscal officer. What does that mean? What do you do? Well, I, I manage, currently I'm managing 765 active grants. We manage the grants from pre-award clear through closeout. It's not only myself, but it's also the fiscal team and our biologists that work in the WISPR program. So all of that together is what, how grants get out the door and to the states and tribes. I am also the contact for the OIG when it comes to the states being audited for the wildlife and sport fish restoration programs. And I administer our own administration funds to make sure they're spent appropriately. Kelly, what is the total amount of money that you're administering right now? So currently there's $298 million. That's such That's such a huge amount of money. That's incredible. You also mentioned that you help the OIG, that's the Office of Inspector General, who does the audits of these grants, correct? Correct. You've worked for the Fish and Wildlife Service for 24 years. This year, you won the Department of Interior's 2021 Meritorious Service Award. What does that award mean to you? Well, it was it was a nice it was a nice award. I'm actually pretty proud of it, but I couldn't have done it without the rest of the team. Not only the fiscal team, but the the programmatic team, <laughs> the whole team of Whisper, and not only just our region, but nationally. So it's not something I could have done alone. Kelly is too humble to say this, but the states and tribes we work with really trust and respect Kelly. That trust and respect is based on long relationships that she's developed. Kelly is known for being proactive and a great partner. Kelly, why have you chosen to stay with the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program all of these years? Because I like the, I really love the partnerships with the states. I love the the idea of the user pay, user benefit. I, my, my dad was a hunter and a fisherman. It's really great to know that the, 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 you know, the boat ramps, I go by, you know, I can go to Milwaukee, I can see a boat ramp that that's built by our program, basically. <laughs> and it's not something you can see with a lot of the other programs in Fish and Wildlife Service. And I came from budget and finance, so I, I like the money side of things. <laughs> and I think we have one of the best teams, the people. <laughs> And even, even the people, I, I noticed they don't leave once they get a job in the wildlife and sport fish program. They, they pretty much stay. How do these grants benefit conservation? So when we give the states the money, they're doing things like conserving wildlife, restoring wildlife, restoring fish, for recreational activities that like boating and hunting, fishing, even the recreational viewers benefit from 
from the restoration of the wildlife and fish. If there was no wildlife and fish, fish out there, there would be no need for, <laughs> for the program. <laughs> Kelly, I know these grants have a life cycle where they start with taxes on recreational equipment. The money from those taxes moves to an account in the Treasury Department and back through the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program out to states for conservation projects. What role does the outdoor recreation industry play in this process and how does the industry benefit? So what we do, it's a user pay user benefit. So the the excise taxes, taxes that come from the manufacturers on the recreational equipment, so it's mostly um, equipment related to hunting and fishing, um, also fuel taxes from, from boating support the sport fish program. If we did not provide the money to the states that, that allows them to do their projects and conserve wildlife and fish, industry wouldn't have basically there would be no benefit to industry because they wouldn't have the wildlife and fishing to to provide to the user. Kelly, can you walk us through step by step what happens with the grant process and what your role is? So we start with the pre-award part of the program which is my role is to get the notice of funding opportunity out in grant solutions in the grants management module where the, so the states can apply for the grant program. And when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the formula programs, not the competitive. The competitive and formula are managed a little differently. Once the applications are submitted, then uh, the fiscal team will pull the application, so then we can begin the review. Both the the fiscal team reviews it, the grant, and also the programmatic team, so or the biologists review. Once the reviews are complete, the fiscal team basically finishes the process in Grant Solutions, which is our grant management system, and that includes creating a purchase requisition in FBMS, generating the notice of award, adding the terms and conditions to the notice of award. And then we give the biologist time to review the terms and conditions on the notice of award to make sure we have everything. And then we finalize it and send it to the grant management officer who approves and issues the notice of award. What Kelly just said is pretty complicated, so I'm going to try to break it down. First, the Fish and Wildlife Service advertises grants in a grant database so that states or tribes can see them and apply. Once the states and tribes apply for the grants, their applications are reviewed by Kelly's team and staff biologists. After the review, the financial team and biologists set the terms and conditions of the grant, basically the stuff that the partners need to comply with, and then the grants are awarded. Kelly also mentioned competitive grants and formula grants. I'm not going to go too in-depth here, but these different grants are just what they sound like. States compete for competitive grants, and these grants usually require partners to make a match. That means that a state's partners need to throw some money into making the proposed project happen. Formula grants are given to states based on a complicated formula that includes things like the number of hunting or fishing licenses, acres of land, or population. States can use these formula grants for priority conservation projects. These also require a match, often in the form of state license fees or volunteer hours. There are also competitive grants that tribes can apply for, called tribal wildlife grants. These grants are so important for tribes to do great conservation work, both on and off tribal lands. Tribal wildlife grants often contribute to tribal heritage and culture by doing things like restoring salmon habitat or conducting research to support sustainable fisheries. The Office of Inspector General sometimes audits the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program and partners. What does an audit look like? So the state fish and, fish and wildlife agencies are audited on their wildlife and sport fish restoration grants once every five years or so. 
the audit basically takes the grants that were active during the audit period, which is the prior fiscal, the prior two fiscal years. Basically, the OIG performs the audit and I'm, I would be the liaison between the state and the OIG. Audits are a big deal in Kelly's world. About every five years, the Office of Inspector General audits the grants that the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program give out. These audits are intended to make sure that the grant money was spent properly. States and tribes often need to produce extensive documentation to substantiate their spending. If the grantees cannot verify their spending, they actually need to pay that money back to the government. Kelly and her team led two states in our region to achieve the rare audit condition of zero adverse findings. Another state had their audit finding reduced by $8 million. When it comes to audits, Kelly and her team are crushing it. Kelly, what kinds of projects are states able to do with the grant money? And what are the names of some of the grants? So they develop boat ramps. They develop fishing access sites. They develop hunting access sites. They do hunter education. They do aquatic education. They restore wildlife. They restore fish. And there's also Clean Vessel Act, which funds the basically the waste <laughs> in pump out stations for the waste in waters. There's the boating infrastructure program, which does the, the bigger tie-ups for the bigger boats or yachts, I guess, the 26-footers. <laughs> There's the coastal wetlands program, which restores wetlands. That does a lot of land acquisition and then restores, rest, restores the land or the wetlands for conservation. We also administer the Endangered Species Pro Section 6 program for um, ecological services, and they do endangered species conservation. We have white nose syndrome that does the bats with the white nose syndrome disease. I, they research and survey, and, and then the wolf recovery program, which is aimed at more the ranchers that are losing their livestock to two wolves. Thanks, Kelly. I can really hear how much you love your job and your work. Thank you so much for your time today.